So welcome everyone. Uh, and as you can see, this is uh, uh, my today's presentation, which is titled Programming with Linear Algebra. Hello world. My name is Dragan Juric, uh, and this is my contact details. So a thing or two about me. Uh, I work at the University of Belgrade as a professor of software engineering. And I use Clojure since 2009. I wrote a couple of Clojure books, uh, which are accessible at uh, aiprobook.com. Uh, if you can, you can send uh, donations uh, that support my work at uh, Patreon, at Dragon Rocks. Also, uh, I, uh, I write a blog which is mostly related to Clojure and other related technologies that I use, uh, which is uh, accessible at uh, dragon.rocks. The blog is free. Uh, and uh, I developed some libraries uh, written mostly in Clojure uh, at uncomplicate.org and also on GitHub. Most of them are on GitHub uh at uh, the uncomplicated github.com slash uncomplicate uh my twitter handle is dragon rocks so today's talk is oh uh, today's talks is motivated by the fact that uh, most uh, closure programmers uh we, which are mostly great programmers or at least really good enough programmers uh are not very up to date or familiar with uh mathematics and uh, application of uh some mathematical topics to programming we are mostly uh, let's say intuitive uh people uh, when it comes to to this most of us learned, for example, when linear algebra is in question, we learned it. Uh, we learned it uh, at the first year of university class, mathematical math class. We mostly learned to prove some uh, some uh, statements uh, and uh, to calculate some matrices either on paper or. Uh, with with the computer but uh, with uh, simple tasks uh, mostly using uh, some examples uh, that are really just uh, simple simple examples for uh, the purpose of learning mathematical technicalities so by the time uh, we become professional programmers uh, we mostly forget even these uh, basics that we knew. So we, we can understand when someone uh, speaks about linear algebra, but uh, the details are, are far gone. But uh, for example, 20 or 30 years ago, uh, linear algebra was not really a hot topic in programming, if you are a general programmer, because this is mostly the thing that was uh, used with statistic, with mathematics, but at that time, these were not so uh, hot uh, programmer topics. But lately, with the advances uh, in deep learning, in artificial intelligence, in data science, in uh, graphical uh, tasks such as games uh, and other things, these uh, these uh, topics uh, became mainstream. So lots of tools, lots of libraries use linear algebra underneath. Of course, uh, maybe these tools are created in a way that you can use it use them even without uh, understanding linear algebra and how they work. But sometimes, for example, you have to solve a new problem, 
that's why when uh, this come handy handy so you have to understand uh how it works to be able to 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 invent a solution and sometimes it, it is a good thing to understand uh, how the solution works uh, to be able to optimize it to make it uh, run a reasonable reasonably fast so these are two things that make this stuff more attractive now to ordinary programmers who are not specialized in mathematics or, or artificial intelligence or machine learning that uh, that uh, brings us to <laughs> what is the uh, my idea for this presentation so my idea is to uh, not to talk about high level things and uh, about uh, attractive application and the newest uh, artificial intelligence advanced and these more like um, uh, hot topics but to provide a programmer oriented hello world so let's forget about uh science fiction stuff let's see how to start your journey uh of learning uh linear algebra as a build as the one of the main building blocks of the several of today hot topics in a way that is really uh step by step from zero to let's say something not to neural networks not to large language models or, or, or not to uh, image recognitions but just to understand uh, what are matrices vectors why they are important how they are implemented how they are used uh, in which way they are optimized and uh, how to uh, transition from the domain problems that uh, we are familiar with to domain problems that can benefit from linear algebra. Uh, so basically, I will try to uh, structure this presentation in a way uh, in which uh, we can learn enough linear algebra and uh, its application so we can start uh, our journey. Let's see uh, how to begin. So, first we will start with just an ordinary domain model, something that most of us uh, work with every day. And of course, this is a really a super simplified domain model. So, let's say we have uh, some uh, data, uh, database uh, of products where each product, I don't know where, where, whether you can see my uh, uh, pointer here, or oh, cursor, you can see it, okay. So we have some pro, uh, products in our database, such banana, mango, pineapple, pears. Uh, these are the idea of the products in, the, in our super simplified uh, closure database. And each of these is described uh, by a hash map with just the two simple keys. One is price in uh, real number, in, in floating point numbers, which is of course not a good practice uh, for, for uh, uh, modeling price. But as I said, this is a super simplified model. So we will just abstract uh, those technicalities. And the other is ID, which we also use as the IDs in the map. So, we have a banana, the price is 0 uh, 1.3. Mango is $2 or euros or whatever. Pineapple is 1.9 and pears are 1.8. And what can we do with uh, lots of products uh, that we have? Uh, let's say we want to sell them. So we want to enable our customers to put uh, a quantity of bananas or, or pineapples or pears in their cards. In this example, I created two cards. One card is uh, 10 bananas, seven pineapples and three pears. Whether it's kilograms or pieces, it's not important for our simplified example. 
so uh, of course the first uh, thing when you, uh, then that we want to process is we want to tell our customer how much uh, the card that they choose uh, costs and of course we have to know this uh, this amount so we can properly uh, charge them and uh, do the sale so we can create uh, a function that uh, computes uh, a price of a card with some products uh, given the database of products and in some basic closure this would be uh, a reduction that reduces card using this function that uh, just accumulates total and the, the the price of the products uh, multiplied by by quantity so this is some straightforward logic that any of us could write in uh, many ways with loops recurs reduces uh, in different languages so i suppose this is uh, not something uh, that any of us would uh, have a problem with so just basic step by step uh, accumulation in basic arithmetics and now we have uh, this function card price that uh, can answer uh, what what is the price of card one given uh, this database of products and it says 31.70 uh, dollars or whatever of course since i didn't use uh, the proper type for money i get some ridiculous uh, floating point numbers but um, just to remind you uh, please don't kill me uh, <laughs> over this uh, i uh, try to make this example as simple as possible so we will abstract uh, the money issue so 31.699999 of whatever uh, bitcoins or whatever and of course we can use this function many times over different cards or and get uh, the answers that we need 23.7 etc <clears throat> and now of course of course uh, most of you came here to to learn something about linear algebra uh, and uh, uh, the logic uh, the logical question is um, what does this example have to do with linear al algebra why we need linear linear algebra for this or at least how we can apply linear algebra for demonstration purposes even if we didn't need it now uh, with this example the problem is that uh, the domain and the computation algorithm is entangled so basically each time we want to uh, write a function that processes similar things uh, we have to uh, write the, the the custom code and uh, this code becomes complicated as different rules come into place uh, and also if we want to uh, be careful about performance uh this can lead to degraded performance because if we have uh like three cards and four products uh any code would be sufficient but if we have three billion products and uh many billion cards then it can become uh an issue uh especially uh for uh, analytical purposes because of course each card when the customer is uh doing uh, is using the application each card is computed in, in isolation so that's not a problem but uh, uh later we want to analyze the behavior of customers and we want to apply many many uh, statistical procedures for example and uh, most of these procedures don't care about specific cards they care about the cards in aggregate so uh, we would have to compute many cards either all cards or just uh, some 
sample of these uh, cards. Uh, and also, not all procedures are simple. Even if we don't have many cards, if, even if we take a population of, uh, oh, sorry, a sample of 3,000 cards out, out of a billion cards, uh, even if we only deal with, even if we only deal with 3,000 cards, maybe the procedure is complicated. So there could, they, there, there should be many uh, computations of these 3,000 cards. Or may, maybe we want to do a simulation when we simulate many different scenarios of the same cards with different prices. So uh, I hope that you, you can uh, think about many of these scenarios. The point is when we only do uh, simple things and we have uh, not much data, everything is the same. But when we uh, get to the uh, to the realm of uh, big uh, data or complicated uh, procedures on this data, we have to care about performance. So then the question is how to optimize these things. Well, the thing is, of course, as many other things in divide and conquer approach. Uh, and this approach says, why don't we solve uh, similar things uh, in, a, in general solutions. And that's exactly what mathematics did. Because these matrices and vectors and uh, all the theory stuff that you learned uh, in college or university or just by yourself on YouTube, uh, mathematics never, never talks about cards and prices and products. Uh, mathematics is really good with uh, abstracting things and extracting only the most relevant uh, uh, the relevant aspects of any problem and uh, defining it in, in the most general and the simplest way possible and then solving and uh, proving many many uh, relations between these uh, simple objects. So linear algebra basically, uh, deals with many uh, many numbers that should be treated uh, as one uh, unit. I, uh, this is not uh, the official definition, of course. This is uh, some simplification that uh, that uh, will help you identify what, when uh, linear algebra could be useful. Of course, when you have uh, one number describing one thing, it's a scalar thing. Uh, but when you have more numbers uh, relating to, to, to similar things or you would like to treat it as a unit, then uh, the stuff from linear algebra can be helpful. And uh, one of the simplest operations uh, with, really, with linear algebra is the dot product. So let's say that the same example is transferred to vectors. So a vector of product prices is this vector of four things. And you, you will uh, see that uh, I'm using closure vectors here. So not formal vectors, uh, but just the closure vector as a collection of four numbers. So product prices are separately put in a vector. Uh, the first card just put the quantity, quantities in a vector and the second, second uh, card put the quantities in a vector. And then the dot product is abstractly defined as a scalar one number uh, that is the res result of this operation. And we will not delve into the mathematical definitions, just in the way, I just, uh, I'll just uh, show you the way that is actually computed. So if we have a two matching vectors, of four elements, we will get the scalar or dot product by first multiplying each of these uh, elements of the vector in pairs, and then uh, adding all these uh, partial products, and we get the scalar dot product. It one it is uh, one number. So in this case, uh, 
I can write this function in uh, a more general way than the previous one. You remember the previous one uh, was specific to products and prices and everything else. This one is much more general. I say I first map access to Ys, and then I add uh, all these elements and reduce uh, them to one number. And uh, we can try it with the actual uh, cards and products. For example, uh, this is not the actual card. Actually, this example is just with two random vectors. So for example, if I, I have a vector of one to three and another of four, five, six, the dot product is 32. One times four plus two times five plus three times uh, six. It should be 32, yes. And uh, just to remind you, uh, all this code uh, is the, the code that you can evaluate in Emacs or uh, Visual Studio Code and, or any other closure, closure environment. Uh, I've just put it into a presentation to avoid uh, any possible technical issues during this presentation. So it's the same as me uh, evaluating this in Emacs, uh, in my Emacs REPL. So the, 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 the whole code is here. Nothing is left uh, from, uh, from what I uh, show in the presentation. Uh, so the same function uh, can be called with uh, the database of, of product rights and the first card, and we get uh, the results uh, 31.69, the same as in the, the example when we wrote uh, the custom closure code. Another card, and again, the same result. Uh, and uh, now uh, we can use this to uh, actually compute the total sales of co all cards. So if I put all cards in a sequence, I can map over it with uh, this uh, general function, and I can call the reduction on it and I get the total sales of my web store and get 55.39. So uh, <clears throat> as you can see, the, the fact that uh, I used uh, the dot product function, the custom made closure implemented uh, that product function, uh, integrates well into, into the overall closure way of writing uh, code. So, uh, I didn't uh, have to commit to any specific framework or to any specific uh, solution that would uh, distract me uh, from from what I do uh, normally. Now, the issue with this is that first someone would have to create a library of such functions, such general functions that we could use in Clojure. So lots of work because there are lots of these functions with functions with different uh, application uh, specifics. Uh, so someone will have to do this work. And another thing which is even more important is that for it to really be useful, it would have to be uh, really well optimized for different kinds of hardware. And uh, uh, we couldn't do it in Clojure. Uh, so the solution is to use a library of linear algebra uh, operations. And uh, this approach helps the uh, in abstracting domain specifics from the computation uh, uh, specifics. And we end up with a general operation which are reusable across the domains. And even better, when we get uh, some familiarity with this, with, with this way of doing things, then often we don't have to write much code. We just have to uh, think about which combination of these uh, 
general operations uh, would uh, help us in solving this problem. And then uh, we just uh, uh, write uh, the code that actually combines them with our domain. And even better, sometimes we don't even have to think that much about how we would solve it. Because in the last 200 years of, or so uh, of uh, applied mathematics, many problems are really well researched and many solutions are really uh, invented and proven and investigated and compared to other solution, solutions. And uh, many of these solutions are actually use linear algebra just in an, in an abstract, abstract theoretical way. So whenever you see the, the signs from uh, the side of sign from for some or uh, the sign that use uh, big uh, uh, capital letters in mathematics, uh, this is a notification uh, that uh, this uh, this solution uses uh, some form of, of linear algebra, because in mathematics often uh, small uh, letters. Uh, denote uh, scholars, so one number, and capital letters denote uh, matrices or vectors or tensors or similar thing. And you, when you see the mathematical formulas, for for example, for some statistical procedures or some uh, other mathematical uh, subject deal that deals with optimization, with uh, operations research, and many other areas uh these uh you have a solution uh written in a general mathematical way and then uh the the main task is uh, to see how to implement this solution and the idea with with linear algebra libraries is that uh it's relatively straightforward to recognize when you see the the formulas which functions can you use or operations can you use which operations can you use <clears throat> to implement these formulas if you wanted to learn uh to to write the custom code of course this is possible and some sometimes unavoidable uh, but then you would have to uh, practically invent uh the solution yourself which might be a good solution for, for the time but it might not be optimal or, or not good enough so <clears throat> If we learn linear algebra and if we have good software libraries, then we can uh, reuse uh, these general solutions that are that have been studied for for many decades, decades and even cent centuries, and we can get optimized opt implementations right out of the box. So, how to do this? Uh, the, the same example is written uh, in Neanderthal now. You can see that I, I have just created vectors of double floating point numbers in this example with the same vectors. The, the, uh, I provided the same data as the source as I was using it in the previous uh, code. And uh, I just... Uh, now I didn't have to write my own implementation of the dot product function because Neanderthal has this function as many others, of course. Uh, so I just call the dot product. I give product prices and I give a cart vector one and I get the same result 31.7. And also with, uh, uh, with the, uh, the second cart, I get the same uh, result. So the first uh, uh, the first benefit of uh, introducing Neanderthals uh, Neanderthal is that I didn't have to write any custom code. I just had to uh, identify how to uh, put my data into standard linear algebra data structures which are vectors and matrices and tensors and similar things and when i put it uh i then had to identify how to interpret these numbers so you can see there is no 
technical difference between product prices and cards. These are just vectors of numbers. So the whole operation in a technical way is ready, but I had to give them meaning. So the, 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 the task of my custom code would be uh, to provide a way uh, for uh, my data to uh, go into right vectors of, or, or matrices. Uh, so this is with vectors, and uh, then uh, how can I extend this uh, example to use uh, matrices? I'm 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 just uh, making a really short uh, break to 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 write uh, to read the comments. Uh, uh -huh. Okay, so maybe it's a good good uh, time to to answer this question because it can help you you follow this so the question is can you describe your development environment testing framework what other differences make uh, closure more productive for your for you compared to other languages so i will be short now to not distract too much from the, the flow of the, of the presentation uh, but uh, please uh, Ask, ask this question uh, at the end of the of the presentation and i will be uh, answering in more details or uh, also the other question can you tell us something about the books i will uh, at the end of the presentation so, uh, what about about my development environment uh, i personally uh, i use emacs uh, with cider uh and uh i use uh bojeder batsov's uh, prelude uh, emacs uh, collection of packages because it's really minimal but at the same time comprehensive so uh i just use standard closure development environment so there is nothing really specific either in neanderthal or in in other uh, libraries that i developed that would require you to use any specialized environment whatever is good for closure development uh, for for general closure development for you will be good with my tools of course uh, i use uh, lining in because uh, it's really handy for library development uh, but but you can use uh, 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 other closure uh, libraries that are similar to lining in. Uh, and of course, for a testing framework, those of you who, who have uh, uh, read uh, the code of ne uh, Neanderthal or other uncomplicated libraries, you would see that, that I use Mijia and not a closure test. Uh, but this is really uh, my preference. Uh, you can use closure test uh, for your tests that use Neanderthal the same. So there is nothing specific here other than closure. And uh, the one thing, of course, there are many things that uh, I might uh, say that uh, make closure more productive for me compared to other languages. But if I have to uh take one thing out and really make it shine it would be a REPL based development because uh in developing these libraries i had to integrate uh many exotic technologies most notably CUDA and graphic development environments which are based on c plus plus and some really nasty extensions of it and really specific things uh but uh, the, the libraries that I develop for integration enable me uh, to develop with CUDA in, rep, in the REPL. So, uh, for example, if I write some custom CUDA code, I can start, I can start my closure REPL. I can write a patch of CUDA code, which is not complete, uh, and I can run it from my closure uh environment uh, even uh as in incomplete as it is and experiment on it 
and see what doesn't work. Basically, I can debug uh, and develop uh, this in the REPL the same as develop I develop REPL code. And this is really that I'm not aware that you can do in Python. Of course, if you have your CUDA kernels, you could, there are Python libraries that enable you, I suppose, to call these kernels from Python and, and integrate in your Python code. But I'm not aware that you can develop uh, your CUDA kernels, which are written in C++, in, a, in an interactive way. And the point here is, here is that uh, uh, with this, uh, these libraries integrate uh, into closure way of doing things completely. So this is something that is not <laughs> basic. So I often forget to, to, to mention it. And thank you for asking. So I will continue now with uh, the presentation. So uh, we we have seen that we can make the, the transition transition from the, the basic uh, closure code to something uh, that uh, is based on matrices and then to the same thing implemented in uh, uh, employing the, the, the proper uh, linear algebra library. But how can I now use matrices for the same example? Because it seems that the, the example is so simple that it exhausted the possibility of, of this demonstration, but uh, it, uh, it's not uh, over. Let's say uh, that I want to uh, uh, analyze or compute all these cards, not as single cards, but but as uh, some sort of aggregate so i'm i'm not interested in a single card but in many thousands of cards in this in this uh, case only two cards uh, we we created only two cards so the first thing that i can do is uh, put uh, these two cards is into a matrix so uh, i don't have two separate objects but one aggregate object and i can when i create uh I will first create uh, uh, an empty matrix full of zeros for this example, but but of course there is a way to load your data into a matrix when you create it. I just want to 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 keep this totally uh, simple and, and basic. So I create a matrix matrix, and I can uh, use a, uh, an existing function to copy the first card into the appropriate row of this aggregate uh, matrix. So the first row will hold the data of the first card, and the second row will hold the data uh, of the second card. So this is just uh, to make sure that we uh, transfer the data properly. And now, I could have opted to write some loop, recure, or reduction over these rows, but that would be the, first, the, the, the typical mistake that a typical programmer would, would make, a typical programmer who is not aware of uh, linear algebra, et cetera, et cetera. So the, 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 um, the fact that I transfer the data into a matrix doesn't by itself doesn't uh, optimize anything by itself if i then uh, continue to extract the the parts of this matrix and compute them uh, myself the proper way would be to see whether there is uh, an existing function that could do the same things thing that i want to compute and in this case we should not write our own uh, loops reductions over these rows, but we should recognize that uh, the same computation can be done by a uh, matrix vector computation, because this is just a bunch of dot, ve uh, dot vector products in theory. So uh, this uh, function exists in Neanderthal, of course. It's MV, it's called MV, which is short of matrix time vector. So you can see that it can uh, multiply cards 
and product prices. And the real, uh, the better interpretation is that we want to uh, transform product prices by cards. But it, this uh, this interpretation requires some knowledge of linear al algebra, so I am avoiding it uh, specifically. You can uh, learn this from my books and, and other linear algebra books. Uh, so, uh, uh, what does this uh, function do? Uh, do? It uh, transform the product prices, but these two cards in one in one uh, step in one operation. So we get our two numbers that we are interested in, thirty one point seven and twenty three point seven, with just one function general function call. So of course, if we had many products and if we had many cards this would still be one function call and we would get many results uh in one step without even needing to write any any uh code that use any algorithm we just call what is already there uh if we wanted to know uh the total uh value of all products uh, the, uh solved so all products were from all cards. Uh, we just call the the uh, the sum function from the the undertool. So we don't even need to write a, uh, a specific function for for that either. So fifty five point four. Uh, I believe that was the result that we got earlier. So is this all for this simple example? Of course not. Uh, it is. It was not very difficult to think uh, of the ways how we can employ even more linear algebra uh, for things that would require more complex uh, co custom code if we wanted to do everything step by step uh, in the general programming way with loops and uh, uh, and for loops or whatever. So. Uh, the first uh, the first feature that uh, we we might like to to have is that uh, we would like to our store to offer discounts for these products uh, and uh, we don't even have to uh, offer discounts uh, the same discount for all customers let's say that we want to uh, implement custom discounts for so that each customer and uh, each uh, uh, session uh, that uh, they make in uh, in our store uh, can have custom discount. So in this case, uh, I implemented. Uh, so sorry, first first uh, I implemented only uh, the uh, discount as a first step only discounts for each uh, product so each of our, our pro, uh, four products have uh, can often discount uh, the first uh, product i believe it was uh, bananas uh, it's a seven percent discount uh, the second is zero percent uh, the third is 0 0.33 uh, percent uh, uh, sorry 33 percent and the fourth is 25 percent and now uh, we would like uh, to be able to uh, integrate these discounts. So the first thing to note is that uh, we had several cards and uh, several products, and uh, we upgraded everything to a matrix. So we would like this discount uh, to be broadcasted to be technically compatible to this, this matrix. Instead of creating the matrix by hand, we can recognize that uh, we have an outer product, uh, outer product operation, uh, which can do this in uh, one step. But before that, uh, we have to think about how we will uh, uh, implement this discount, because the point of discount is to reduce the price by some amount. 
depending on the price of the product. Uh, so uh, uh, we would like to either subtract uh, the uh, final amount uh, of the, the, uh, the discount or to pre-compute the percentage of the price uh, that uh, actually the, the, the customer uh, that the, the customer should pay the either way either way i opted for the second one so first uh i subtracted discounts for the from the vector of funds to see uh what is the uh the the scale uh, of each price that uh, what is the number that each price have to be scaled with so 75 percent 60 0 0.67 0 0.75 etc and then i multiply the the the, the this uh, scale with product prices to see what is the the price that the customer the final par price of each product that the customer uh have to has to pay so instead of uh zero point uh it was 0 0.4 or something like that or 0 0.3 0 0.3 i think what it was bananas now it's 0 0.21 uh, 2 etc so uh i also use the the standard uh, linear algebra operations to or vector and matrix operations uh to compute the final prices and then uh i repeat the same code the, the first uh, this uh, this snippet was just to show you what i'm doing and this is the snippet of, of the whole operation of discount the, the products uh, so i transform it by, by cards and i get the uh the answer so the the next uh, thing uh, that i can think about is that uh, i would like to simulate uh, different uh hypothetical discounts to see uh what uh, how much my store would earn so suppose that uh i know that uh customer will put some product in, products into the cart i would like to compute uh how how much money uh, my store uh, will will uh, earn from this so basically i can create uh, many of these hypothetical combinations of uh, discounts and the same code that I already wrote can now uh, give me all these answers. Before that, I have to upgrade uh, this discount matrix to be, uh, sorry, uh, I have to uh, uh make this compatible with uh with the the code uh with the data that they have which is in meters so i have to uh uh, re uh subtract this from the vector of ones uh, but i don't uh, want to create the whole matrix which potentially might be a really big matrix and fill it with ones but i can use the uh outer product operation which is called rk in the standard linear algebra software and just uh multiply it with ones so uh the, these uh, uh these uh discounts uh to get the the uh appropriate uh matrix of uh, matrix of uh, the discounts so in this uh, case my discounted prices uh final matrix would be this uh matrix of ones uh i would uh multiply it, uh or transform it by uh the discount matrix and then i can uh get the the hypothetical uh scaling factors for the prices and then uh yeah i can just use 
one matrix multiplication operation, which is like the basic standard uh, thing that uh, linear algebra libraries do. Of course, they do many more things, but they all have matrix multiplication. So when I have this, I just call matrix multiplication of cards and discounted prices, and I get all these uh, uh, prices, and then I can sum them up uh, using matrix vector multiplication and get the final answers. It was it, it is 46.87, 48.81, and 49.44. So basically, if I uh, knew that my customers or if I just suppose that my customers would buy that many articles, and if I suppose that many different uh, discounts could be applied in the stores, I can see what would be the final, uh, the total uh, earn of these stores, and I can decide whether something, uh, this is something that is good for my business or not, or uh if i uh, won't break uh, break a bank or, or something like that um so that, that's the point i know that this is now starting to to be confusing for for most of you because um if you're not familiar with these operations and how they are combined it uh, it makes sense, but you, you wouldn't be able to write it yourself right away. So I will not complicate it much more. Uh, I will just uh, comment on, on what we have seen. So basically, we have linear algeb algebra knowledge, which have been developed in the past, let's say, 200 years. And many uh, useful truths have been proven about this theory uh, many useful operations have been developed and proved and uh, explored and compared to other solutions lots of literatures uh, these this theory have been has been applied to many uh, areas uh, from statistic to machine learning optimization simulation many many useful things many papers have been written many books many courses this is the knowledge that we can use of course if we didn't have a software library for that it is difficult to use because we we have to learn it and learn learn how to implement it properly fortunately there are there are lots of software tools uh, that uh, more or less corresponds to this theory and my goal with Neanderthal and Deep Diamond and other libraries would be uh, was one of the main goals was to not only integrate these solutions but uh, to integrate them in such a way that it's relatively straightforward to connect it to theory. So these are uh, uh, so we have lots of useful and well-rounded uh, general functions that we can uh, employ and. Uh, with this function we can develop useful useful and general code but we can also customize it and get uh, number processing algorithms that are really uh, performant and uh, simple or at least uh, not really not uh, not large but even if they are not simple they, they can at least be brief and sparse and uh, short so we can uh, then uh, like manage uh it's so so i'm talking about tens or hundreds of lines of code uh rather than uh tens of thousands or, or hundreds of thousands or god forbid millions uh so that's the first aspect of of, of this like have a, a great uh, theoretical be uh, background and have a, a good software libraries that implements this theory and then employing this. Uh, so the first time, uh, the first thing that we get is this uh, robustness of code uh, and the uh, generality of this code. The other thing that we get is performance. So just a, a short illustration. Uh, 
Suppose that we uh, decided to use vectors and matrices in linear algebra. And uh, now we want to decide whether we want to write our closure of Java code that implements it, or we should use a library. Let's compare the speed for some typical, not so large uh, vectors or, or matrices. So let's say we have two, two vectors, closure vectors, uh, each uh, 100,000 elements long. Let's do uh, a benchmark, well, just a quick benchmark with, with a criterion library uh, that uh, measures how much time it takes uh, to uh, compute a dot product with these two vectors, which is really a simple op operation. As you have seen, dot products is just a bunch of multiplication and, and additions, which is something that uh, computer is really good with. In this case, on my computer, it was 16 milliseconds, which is not that slow at first glance. 15 milliseconds is just one blink of an eye, or even maybe maybe even faster than that. I don't know what one blink of an eye should be something like 30 or, or 40 milliseconds. So or 50 or 100. So this is quicker. But let's see whether we can speed it up. The first optimization that we can do in, in Clojure uh, on JVM is to uh, write our own loop. So instead of using the, the map reduce algorithm, just lo use loop recure uh, and uh, do everything by ourselves. The same function, 2.23 milliseconds, which is seven times faster. This is all already a good start. But let's see uh, whether we can use uh, a library uh, so we don't have to write these seven lines of code ourselves. Well, can we use some library? Uh, we can use the fold map function from the Fluo Kitten library, uh, which is a uh, category theory library for, for, for foreclosure. And it's four milliseconds. So it's not as fast, but also uh, faster than, than the custom code um, with uh, no need to write anything. But it's still in the ballpark in the same order of magnitude as the code that we have seen uh, up to now. Let's say that we identify that the problem is the closure uh, data structure, closure vector, because it uses objects. Uh, and we know that uh, Java is a bit faster when we use primitive numbers uh, and we avoid boxing, boxing and uh, unboxing of our numbers. So we do another loop recure uh, with uh, the primitive arrays. So we had to switch the date type to primitive Java arrays. But then we use closure functions for working with arrays, uh, do the typical loop recure. Uh, and then the, we create the, uh, these uh, to the double arrays. We call the same function with this data structure and we get 79 microseconds, which is a lot faster than the previous code. It's something like uh, 20 times faster than the, the optimized uh, loop recure uh, in closure, but uh, 200 times or so faster than the, the first code, which was seven milliseconds, if I remember correctly. No, it was 15 milliseconds, yeah, 200 times faster. So just by going from closure vectors to Java arrays and from closure loop recurs, uh, sorry, from closure map reduce to Java uh, loop recure with primitive arrays, we sped our code by 200 times, which when the difference is between 
15 millisecond and, and 80 microsecond, it might be the same. Maybe our threshold is two seconds for the task, so it's good enough. But uh, if you go back in time, 20, uh, 20 minutes in time, and remember that we uh, started with simple vector operations and then we introduced matrix operations, uh, the thing is that this can blow up uh, really fast and go blow up uh, exponentially. So uh, it's more typical that our custom code would run for two days and the optimized code would uh, finish in two hours or, or 10 minutes. And this is a big difference because if we do something really uh, uh, valuable, valuable, our customer may uh, accept to wait for 10 minutes for the answer, but they are less likely to be able to wait for two days. That may be too late for the answer. But we didn't uh, use Neanderthal yet. Let's see uh, how fast uh, it goes with uh, Neanderthal vectors. So I create the same vectors in Neanderthal, and then I use the dot function. So I didn't uh, use the custom, it didn't need to write the custom code. I just create my data and use the standard function, function and it's 8.57 microseconds. So even the first code that was sped up many times is now 10 times faster and 100,000 elements is really a small uh, amount of data. Typically, we would have much more uh, to do. So the next logical step is we heard that GPUs are really much faster than CPUs and that the recent uh, advances in artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, have uh, much to thank uh, uh, to GPUs. So logically, let's uh, take our 100,000 vectors, uh, our vectors of 100,000 elements and run it on GPU with CUDA through closure, of course. And uh, let's see, this is the closure, the complete closure code. As you can see, the useful code is the same as before. I use the same Neanderthal dot function. I use the same criteria, uh, criterion with progress reporting quick bench. I use the same vector creating code, etc. The only difference is I have to set up the CUDA environment. So the code can decide uh, which of the available graphic cards you, it can use, etc., etc. So please don't be afraid uh, of this. Uh, typically, uh, uh, your application would not write this function. This would uh, the, the, this uh, CUDA specific code? This uh, code. Uh, this is only the setup code that uh, should be uh, run uh, at the point that the application is uh, started. Or so, so typical code that uses CUDA would not be much different or different at all from the the code that would run on CPU. Depends on what you want to do, of course. Uh, but just the example is. Uh, uh, self-contained, so I had to include uh, this uh, setup in, in the example itself. So it looks like it's uh, more complex than, than the previous code, but really the meat of it is it's the same. So it's 20, 22 microseconds, but isn't that slower than the previous code? What is the, this doesn't look right. Okay, it's faster than the Java arrays, but why it's slower than the CPU uh, closure code? Of course, for those of you that uh, that uh, attended some conferences when I presented similar example examples, know the answer. But let's uh, see what what is uh, the thing. Before that, I I will just show you that uh, Neanderthal also uh, supports OpenCL, which is a different standard than CUDA, which is more general. 
So OpenCL can run on AMD computer uh, graphic cards or on NVIDIA graphic cards. It has its uh, drawbacks and its uh, advant uh, advantages, but the, the code, uh, apart from this setup, uh, context setup, the code is the same. I just call the general dot function. I don't care where or how it's computed. But it's also not uh, faster than the Neanderthal CPU code. Now, why is that so? The thing is that GPU uh, uses its own memory and it's located outside of your normal context uh, of the, the, the processor that your code runs uh, uh, on. So uh, GPUs have, uh, the data has to be transferred to the GPU and the GPU has to be, to be started. Uh, the data has to be communicated from, from the GPU. It all takes some time, it's not a lot of time today. It, re it improved uh, really a lot. But it's still slower than simply using uh, the the Intel optimized code on your CPU and using the registers in your CPU. So it doesn't make sense of optimizing really slow matrices and simple uh, operations such as just one call to to dot product uh, on the GPU. When GPU does make sense is either when I have lots of data or more common uh, when I have lots of complex computations. So many different combinations of this matrix multiplication or so, then it really shows its advantages. And that's what we can see with uh, artificial, uh, artificial intelligence and machine, learnings, and machine learning. They use some simple training data, maybe a lot of it, maybe not a lot of it, but then they use many matrix multiplication or, or tensor transformations on the GPU. And that's why uh, they are so faster than, than CPU. So uh, to demonstrate this, I will uh, use uh, the matrix multiplication op uh, operation, which is also one of the basic, relatively simple uh operations uh, that uh, are heavily optimized on, on the on, in these libraries uh but not not the the most complex uh, one for sure so i adopted some code from rosetta code uh, and i implemented it in closure so the matrix multiplication is implemented in closure transfer from the rosetta code here and uh, if I use a small matrix enclosure, like uh, actually uh, this small matrix is uh, implemented as a, a vector of vectors, because normal programming languages usually don't support matrix as a two-dimensional uh, data structure. Uh, and I multiply this matrix. I can see that uh, it works. Uh, the result seems as it should be. Let's measure the performance. So if I take two small matrices, or at least not really very large, of 246 uh, columns uh, by 246 rows, and I uh, measure the matrix multiplication, you can see that it took 2.3 seconds for this relatively simple uh, op operation on relatively small matrices. So it's all already uh, quite demanding regarding uh, running time. Let's create two uh, th the same matrices, but just in Neanderthal general matrix format. And then uh, do a quick bench of uh, MM application, which uh, is a short mnemonic of matrix multiplication or matrix uh, by matrix, whatever sounds uh, more familiar to you. So MMAB, uh, it takes 
129 or 130 uh, microseconds. So from 2.3 seconds, uh, we uh, sped it up to 130 microseconds. So not even a tenth, so basically a tenth of a millisecond. So it's uh, 2000, uh, so it's 20, maybe 15,000 times faster. And even this can be optimized because in the first case, uh, this code created a new matrix for each result. We don't have to do that. We can uh, provide the placeholder for results and use the MM uh, exclamation mark destructive operation uh, on the matrix C. And let's see it now, 105 microseconds. So we can make it even, even faster. Uh, uh, which is usually what, what we want to do in this kind of code. And let's see about CUDA. So this is also already really large speed up, but let's see it in CUDA. The same code, MM, GPU, G, uh, ABC, with just some uh, context code and creation of uh, data and uh, the automatic uh, release of, of this memory so it doesn't clutter our GPU. Uh, of course, we uh, wait, we synchronize this code in this case to be sure uh, that it that we uh, wait for it co to compute the results because one of the, the main uh, mistake with measuring GPU code is to forget uh, that the GPU co uh, communication with the graphic card is asynchronous. So you, in this step, we tell our GPU to multiply these two matrices. But then uh, the code returns uh, control to us. So we can continue doing different things even before the GPU even started maybe to compute this com uh, the, these uh, matrices. So here we make sure that our GPU wait, waits for uh, that we that our REPL waits for GPU to complete the code, return the result, and then we we measure it, we measure it, and then we get 14 or 15 microseconds. So we sped it; it's seven times faster than the 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 CPU for the the same matrices, which are not really really large. And for big matrices, the difference becomes uh, more notable. So, for example, if we have two matrices of 8,000 by 8,000, on uh, the CPU, it's uh, 2.8 or 2.9 milliseconds, even though the CPU has uh, several cores and uh, the Neanderthal, uh, Neanderthal uses Intel's optimized implementation provided by MKL, et cetera, et cetera. Everything is uh, as fast as it could be. Uh, so the CP is 200, uh, 2,000, uh, 2.8 uh, milliseconds, and GPU is 112 or 113 milliseconds. So it is something like, um, I believe 25 times faster or so. So the point is, the more complex the task, the more complex these optimized uh, operations that you, you, you use in your implementation, the difference between uh, uh, CPU and GPU becomes uh, more notable. So if you have relatively small data and you have relatively simple uh, implementation, it doesn't pay off to, to employ the GPU, but as your uh, data becomes bigger and as your operation become uh, complex and uh, as they use more matrix multiplication and uh, matrix vector multiplication and other well-optimized things that are suitable for GPU, uh, your code uh, would benefit more from uh, GPU. Of course, the point is, sometimes you can write the whole algorithm with Neanderthal. That's great. Sometimes some pieces are missing. You have custom requirements that are that you cannot 
uh, cover by, by using uh, general uh, linear algebra operation. But my all, uh, libraries are implemented in a way that you can mix the, the general code that you can use and to just provide the small pieces of, uh, of specific domain specific code that you can uh, either implement in, in closure or for some cases uh, in uh, CUDA kernels or so. And I use this, I use uh, I used what I preach, I used in Neanderthal and Deep Diamond and you can see examples that you can you, uh, use for learning uh, in the, the source code of uh, Neanderthal Deep, Deep Diamond. Uh, and of course, uh, it is not easy to, to learn this all by yourself. Uh, that's why uh, I wrote uh, two books, uh, which I will be uh, uh, telling you more uh, now. Um, I just uh, wanted to read uh, the new comments. Uh, assume, uh, so so uh, we got a few uh, more questions. Uh, one is, assuming more people will start building libraries on top of Neanderthal, uh, what would you hope to see most in a stack of numerical libraries built around Neanderthal? It's a great question, Daniel. So uh, my uh, vision with, the, with this would be, let's suppose that we have Neanderthal, Deep Diamond, maybe some other general library uh, that deals with these general uh, functions uh, that are well described in literature uh, and that are well, well based on theory, that are really general and that many people can use in their code uh, with their specific domains. So then, uh, what is the idea? The idea is uh there are lots of uh domains that use linear algebra most obvious is statistics so we have statistics uh and uh, most of these functions and theory are written with uh vectors matrices etc so instead of impl re-implementing this statistical function uh in our custom code why not implement a statistic library that is based on Neanderthal, at least partly, or uh, on, on uh, closure CUDA or, or on other libraries? So the point is, in the same way as uh, we provide uh, these uh, general functions that are theoretically well well founded as a library, we could we could use the same for other mathematical domains. So the programmer who create custom code don't have to reinvent uh, the wheel each time, but that they can use the, the ready-made uh, optimized libraries. Uh, now, uh, a step towards that are my, my books, because one, one of the principal issues with linear algebra as implemented in these libraries, not only my libraries, but with NumPy or or any other technology that is based on linear algebra, is that most programmers don't know how to use them properly. Because most programmers uh, who, who didn't, who forgot linear algebra, they use NumPy as just some sort of poor man's uh, list or sequences. And then they tend to, write their own, their own custom code uh, that, uh, uh, the, 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 that uh, computes e each of these elements by itself. That's because um, at least um, they forgot linear algebra and they uh, don't know which functions or the combination of functions from NumPy or Neanderthal uh, could solve their problem if it's if it is not all obvious. Uh, and why it is uh, why this is uh, difficult to overcome is that uh, the literature that teaches you linear algebra is mostly uh, written for mathematicians or for or or for general students uh, of mathematics. 
So they deal with uh, abstract examples or with really simple examples, and they uh, mostly the, the exercises are mostly uh, focused on on some uh, some uh, technicalities of, of these operations or about proving these things, and not so much uh, implement uh, oriented towards application to specific domains that are uh, that programmers can see every day. So that's why I wrote these these books. Uh, in in uh, them, uh, I tried to uh, fill in these gaps. So, for example, the book Numerical Linear Algebra for Programmers. It's not your typical uh, linear algebra books that teaches you uh, teaches you vectors or uh, or matrices, uh, theorems, and proving things and uh, solving simple uh, computations. But on the other hand, is not disconnected from these these topics. So my idea is that you can take any of uh, standard linear algebra textbooks textbook. I recommend some some uh, textbooks uh, that you that you take some textbooks uh, based uh, written for engineers because these are most mostly application oriented, and then following this book, I show you that uh, how these standard uh, standard building blocks of mathematics uh, transfer to programming. So, for example, if you um, take something really basic as matrix multiplication, multiplication uh, and some theorems uh, uh, that are connected to matrix multiplication, I discuss them uh, here through code. And I also reference a mathematical textbook so you can connect the theory uh to to the to the uh, code and then uh in the the last part of the book uh i give several examples from uh, examples from statistics or machine learning or some programming topics uh and show you uh how these functions are really simply implemented as a combination or or one two or or a few uh linear algebra uh standard linear algebra functions uh and how uh how my thought uh, thinking process works when i uh, create these solutions uh i don't just give you the code and and tell you okay call this function when you need for example uh to compute principal com uh, component analysis i i show you what it is I show you uh, where to find theory. I show you then how I identify which functions uh, from Neanderthal can be used uh, to create these implementations and different uh, performance uh, issues that you can uh, stumble upon while solving this. So basically, this is some sort of tutorial that takes you that uh, that assumes that you only know how to program, and they, then I show you each step of how you, you can build your knowledge and uh, start learning uh, some of theory and some uh, of uh, theory applications uh, um, in closure with these libraries. And the other book, Deep Learning for Programmers, goes even further. So it takes the task of creating a uh, deep learning uh, library and framework from scratch. Uh, and then I st start from the very simplest explanation of uh, neural networks, and also I, can, I, I reference uh, the actual useful uh, introductory texts uh, of, of a neural network uh, literature. Uh, but then I explain everything from scratch, step by step, without any uh, missing steps. That's really important because lots of uh, books would show you the really simple things and then uh, they will skip 10 steps and then show you some uh, mind blowing stuff. Uh, and uh, these 10 uh, intermediate steps are where the actual learning 
takes uh, place. So my point was, uh, let's show you that uh, with these general libraries, you can even build a fully featured uh, deep learning library that is really fast and really faster than TensorFlow in, in the, the, uh, the case of uh, the functionalities that are implemented. And uh, so uh, this is uh, basically like a, like the deep learning from for programmer programmers is uh, at one part uh, the uh, application of numerical linear algebra for programmers, so the next step. But at the other place, uh, at the other at the other part is like the tutorial of how to write performant closure code like to to uh, improve your uh, closure coding skills even if you are not interested in deep learning uh, in itself but uh, to uh, you want to learn how you can make, make your closure code uh, super fast uh, in the cases that you need to crunch many numbers whatever these numbers uh, are and uh, whatever methods you're using as long as it can be uh, described by linear algebra operations and next uh, of course there are a, a few libraries that uh, are uh, relevant for these topics one is neanderthal that deals with vectors and matrices and linear algebra operations deep uh, diamond uh, broadens this with tensor support and uh, typical deep learning operations support, but it's not uh, constricted, constricted to deep, uh, deep learning. If you uh, have an algorithm that needs tensors, deep diamond might, might help you. Uh, there are two libraries for GPU programming, specifically Clojure CUDA and Clojure CL, uh, that you can use together with uh, Neanderthal and Deep Diamond, but you can use them separately for graphical card uh programming uh there are some other cool domains like category theory that you can find in my libraries on uh in un uncomplicated but then uh, uh on my blog you can ha uh, you can find many tutorials uh that uh, use these libraries there are these two books and uh, of course uh i developed this uh by uh, myself, so I'm sponsoring this. Also, Closure is together uh, was really generous uh, in providing me several funding rounds, uh, and uh, really, uh, I have to thank about uh, thank them for sponsoring me and also sponsoring many other programmers. Uh, so, uh, if you can. Uh, uh, provide some funding uh, to closures together please do because they're really uh, doing a fantastic job uh, also i accept uh, donation on patreon and actually these two books on this address ai pro book uh, i write them uh, and they are not uh, they are not open unfortunately uh, because i use uh, uh, all funds that I earn through these books uh, for developing these libraries and the materials. Some of them, some of these materials are free on my blog, but unfortunately, I, I cannot uh, open them uh, all because uh, the practice shows that uh, when everything is uh, uh, free of charge, then people are not really motivated to to uh, contribute. Uh, financially and then uh, it's really difficult to uh, to develop this because uh, it takes really a lot of lot of time because really this is uh, some specialized closure code that it's not nothing something that you can write in three afternoons or so so uh, i will thank you all for listening uh, to this presentation